Hey y'all, or should I say, comrades? Noon's here at Noon Airborne RC. And if it's your first time here, smash that like and subscribe button so you can get notified for future content. Well, we got another unboxing today. We got the MiG-15 from Freewing, a 64 millimeter. It is a hand tosser. Um, MiG stands for Magoyan Gvernovich MiG Pitsnatsic Fogut. Um, it's a 64 millimeter, runs off a 3S power cell. 2200 is what I'm going to be using in it. It is a belly lander. Uh, we will have later on videos on uh, putting on landing gear for that. We got that landing gear sitting on the shelf. And also, it does not have a carbon spar going through the wings, so we're going to be doing that mod too. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. Get some! And we're back. So before we go ahead and do the unboxing on this bad boy, let me go ahead and let you know what I'm going to go ahead and put in for a receiver. I went ahead and I picked up the Spectrum AR637 Tango. I've been having really good luck with these receivers. I don't really care for all the smart stuff in it, but I do like the forward programming of the AS3X and also having the safe. Um, out here in Arizona, we'll get some high winds come out of nowhere and it's nice to have that little uh, safety cushion, if you will, if you do need it. We'll also go through on how I set these things up as I've done in previous videos, a quick five minute down and dirty. If you really want to learn how to go ahead and program these things, then I highly encourage you to check out the Air Marshal, uh, Dave Marshall's channel. He goes into high in depth on how to program this. Uh, as far as mods, uh, this thing is a belly lander. It does not come with landing gear, even though I will be doing a landing gear mod to it in a later video. But the first mod is to take the weight on the wings. The wings have no spar. So I've also read uh, reviews where people are landing on the tanks and it kind of kinks the wings because there's no spar. So on Amazon, I went ahead and I picked up some three millimeter carbon spars, or as everybody uh, in the groups call, carbon spa. That one's for you, Mickey. I'm gonna be cutting one of these down to length. I will be fitting in the wings, so we'll have reinforcement for the landing gear that I picked up. So stay tuned in that video if you're interested in the landing gear mod, if you really want this. This thing is highly affordable. Um, it does not have a rudder, so I see how that's a turnoff to everybody. But once we do our landing gear mod, we will have a steering servo. We will be running a 32 thousandths in, uh, of an inch um, um, control rod and we will be making a rudder on this as well so without a further ado let's go ahead and unbox this Mikoyan Gvernovich Mik Pitsnatsich Fagot all right let's go ahead and unleash the beast all right so a little bit about the MiG-15 little historical fact is when it first came out and the US forces saw this thing they were pretty amazed one of the headlines about this jet was it was the jet that stunned the west really wasn't too much out there like it before this thing came out all right got our warranty card good old motion rc Let's go ahead and get this box out. And get this box gone. And as you can see everybody, it's not like your traditional storefront um, box where it has all the cool graphics and everything. I was expecting it to come this way. Just a plain white Jane box, but the excitement's inside. So let's go ahead and get that bird's eye view when we go ahead and take this out. Okay y'all, let's go ahead and Get this box opened up. Or as the Petronov brothers say, do it slow and sexy. <laughs> uh, hope I was able to keep that in frame. So as you can see guys, this is how it comes laid out. We got our handy dandy manual. I'll go ahead and pull this out one at a time so you guys can go ahead and see. 
We got our main hatch. We got our, <clears throat> excuse me, our vertical fin with the rudder that we will be making an actual rudder into it. Our two elevators and horizontal stabs. Looks like both wings come in the same bag. We got our two drop tanks, got our plastic liners. What have we got in here? Got a bag of our tidbits that we'll be needing to go ahead and assemble this. Some A and B glue, uh, the um, or what I call epoxy, pretty much. And last but not least, the fuse. And as you guys can see, that's pretty much everything inside what comes in the box. Now let's go ahead and look at the stuff in more detail. We're back y'all. So we're gonna go ahead and do something a little bit different since it's a smaller plane. Uh, I'm not gonna have so much attention on what I'm doing just here on the table so I can show you the parts up close. Uh, don't mind the dirty table, this is my hobby table. So as you can see, it comes here with the manual. It's very plain, uh, not too much to the plane, doesn't have to be you know, all in too much detail. So let's go ahead and look at the first thing. We got our two drop tanks. They're made out of foam. They're just gonna go ahead and glue in. You don't have to fly with these, but if you're gonna belly land them on the grass, I would highly recommend you do do it. It would get, uh, you got these little plastic liners that basically would go on the bottom and help with the uh, landings. The other good thing about it is when you have your plane and you hit the ground, it's not gonna tip and scrape a wing or get stuck in the grass and make it spin. This will kind of keep it upright right here. A little helpful tip that I do with these, if I'm gonna be landing these things in asphalt, is I like to use zip ties. I'll go ahead and uh, cut a piece of zip tie and I will hot glue it, one here on the bottom, the other one right here, and one down the center of the plane. And when you land, it'll make a zzz sound, but it will keep it from damaging the plane. I do that with almost all my belly landers if I take it out to the field. So that's pretty much it for the pylons right there. We got our hatch, very simple. It goes in with uh, magnets, that's how it's held on. No clear glass or nothing, it's just a very plain basic canopy and there's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, this whole kit was $109, plus uh, I paid $9 for expedited shipping but you can get it shipped for free and it'd be $109. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead with the vertical stab. Right. And it is two pieces. The reason why is right through here, that is where you're gonna go ahead and feed out your two uh, elevator control lines one they're both going to go in here one will come out this way and one will come out this way and then you glue that in so then you have them coming out on either end right there uh, there is a spar that goes right through here for the two horizontal stabs and that's what we're going to go ahead and pull out next and just like mig fashion it has a grotesquely enlarged empennage section it, which is one of the things i kind of like about the mig uh, another thing with the MIG, this thing recommends 1300 to 1800 3S batteries. I'm going to be using my trusty 3S 2000, uh, 2200s actually. And I've been reading online that that is the way to go. That this is too tail heavy because of the empennage. And that's where a lot of people are not getting a lot of success on their maidens. So you want to make her a tad nose heavy. And the thing with the MIG, the way you fly it is wherever you're pointing this nose, is that's the way it's going to go. There is one horizontal stab with your elevator. 
You do come with hinges already installed. You do have to put in your control horns and install them for you. Um, a lot of people don't like that. It helps keep the cost down. And I don't mind doing that extra little bit to go ahead and get it, uh, to get it done and save some money. Um, as you can see, the paint job is really good. You got your hinges. Don't forget to go ahead and bend these out when you get them. And just for S and G moments, we'll go ahead and we'll put that on right there. And remind, uh, just to remind you that there is a carbon spar that goes on these to give it some rigidity. And the little piece goes on right there. And we got that together right there. We'll keep that right there in front for now. <clears throat> and we're already almost done taking everything out. Next is going to go ahead and be the wing sections. There's one and there's two. Both come in a bag with a piece of foam in the middle to keep it from giving damage. Same thing like on the empennage end, you do have to put in your own control horns. Same thing on that side, you have your lead right here. It is just one control surface. You do not have any flaps on this. This is a three channel. When we're said and done, it will be a four channel. You have your fences already pre-glued. Your servos already installed with your lead right here. Uh, uh, for in the kit, I noticed it doesn't come with any tape. So if you want to go ahead and get some silver tape or whatever tape to go ahead and hold in that lead, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't like to have the lead exposed, especially with this Arizona grass. You have your hinges already pre-installed and that's the right wing and that's the left wing. Now these things right here, they do get just glued on, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a spar into this and that'll be in our assembly video coming down the pipe. So there's your two wings. Go ahead and move this stuff off to the side. Your bag of tidbits comes with your control horns, your clevises, it comes with your Y for your ailerons, and there's a little carbon spar for the empennage section. And that's all that comes inside the bag. Alright, last but not least, we're going to go ahead and do the fuse. Let's go ahead and take her out of the plastic. And there's the fuse everybody. Comes with your elevator servo uh, right in there. The one for the ailerons are in the wing and that's pretty much it. Comes with the 30 amp BEC and you have your fan access right through here. A lot of people who are flying these, they're end up ending up putting in a 40 amp ESC and changing out the motor. That way you can go ahead and run 4S on this. That will be fun. I eventually will be doing that once I fly this around on 3S. I like to make it go faster. It comes with a plastic front end. And if you go ahead and see right through that, plenty of cooling right there for the battery and the intake. Um, there is no cheater holes on this, but with that big front end right there, I don't think you're going to need it. Comes with your two uh, control lines already pre-installed for your elevator. Um, has the breakout for uh, your air brakes, but this model does not come with air brakes. You're not going to get all that bells and whistles for $109, everybody. But if you look at it, it is a very good and very detailed for the price. And it's a nice little plane you can go ahead and keep, you know, in the back of your truck, like what I'm planning on doing. And just have it for a toss and boss. But I will have landing gear on this. That will be in future videos, I keep on saying before. So let's go ahead and just fit this real quick.
Last but not least, we're going to go ahead and put our hatch. And it tongues in through the back. And that's pretty much it. Now mind you, we got to do all this gluing. And we are going to be adding in a spar. I did pick up these 3mm spars from um, Amazon. I live out in the middle of the desert and the nearest hobby store to me now since Hobby Town closed in Tucson is up in Phoenix and I don't get up there that way too often. So what we're going to go ahead and do with this is we're going to go ahead and install this in the fuselage probably somewhere around here. And if I can go out to at least right here, I will feel pretty good and comfortable with that. If I can get it out more, I will do so. Let's go ahead and get this thing up. And the reason why is if you guys look, there's a carbon spar already in the wing here and here. So to take up the load, if I can get the carbon spar right in the front and glue it in, I think it's going to give it real good rigidity for the landing gear that we're going to go ahead and install. Alright everybody, this is pretty much it put together. It's not glued or anything. We just did this uh, right after everything you saw me just putting it together just to see how it goes. 64 millimeter, 3S power. Um, I'm 160 pounds, 5 foot 9, so you can kind of get a just for the size of it. Uh, this table is a 6 foot by 2 and a half foot. And you can go ahead and toss this bad boy, but like I said, we're going to be adding a rudder. And I think the easiest way to do the rudder is just by adding the rudder on the bottom. Um, to add it to the top right here will require more work. And we're just going to go ahead and use the bottom right here just to give us enough. If my experiment doesn't work, then we'll try and incorporate in the top. But just we're going to try doing this bottom section right here. Go ahead and put this bad boy right here. And that's pretty much the plane right there. Now let me go ahead and show you guys the gear that I went ahead and I picked up from uh, Motion RC. There are two types of gear for these size planes. One is for the, oh God, the green German plane. I think it's called a Lipbosch. I'm not too uh, sure. And the other one is for the A4 Intruder. Um, they look very similar in the pictures. I don't know if there's a difference. They do have a different part number. I went ahead and I picked up the gear set for the A4. And here is the gear set right here. Actually, they sent me retractable gear. Oh wow. Well guys, I guess that's going to be the wrong thing. I'm going to have to go ahead and call them up. Um, let me go ahead and block out my address. As you guys can see, I bought the F8, I called it A4, I'm sorry, the F8 Crusader gear. And they sent me the A10 gear with retracts right here for the free wing. So they actually sent me a more expensive gear set than the gear that I ordered. So now I'm going to have to go ahead and do a return and that video is going to have to wait. Um, thank you Motion for sending me more expensive gear but I'm going to be giving you a call here shortly so we can go ahead and get this exchanged. And as you guys can see when I go ahead and I do the video you're going to go ahead and get the good, the bad, the dirty. Um, this entirely a complete mistake, no harm on them. We'll go ahead and give them a call and I'll give you an update on that video when we'll actually go ahead and assemble this and do our mods. Till then, noon's out. Get some!